Yesterday morning, we spoke to Mr. Arnold over the phone. We asked him to repeat for us, in his own words, what he saw in the sky over Mount Rainier on June 24th, 1947. We recorded what he said, and we're going to play it for you now. The slight beep that you will hear intermittently is required by law to let both parties of a phone conversation know they are being recorded. Here now is Mr. Kenneth Arnold. It was while I was searching for this crash that I noticed a terrific blue flash past nose of my airplane. I noticed that the flash came from a haze of very peculiar looking objects that were rapidly approaching Mount Rainier at about 107 degrees. This chain of objects were <coughs> uh, nine in number. Uh, I assumed at the time they were a new formation or a new type of jet. So I was baffled by the fact that they did not have any tails. The path, uh, almost directly in front of me, but at a distance of about 23 miles, which is not very great in the air, I judged their wingspan to be at least 100 feet across. Uh, the sighting did not particularly disturb me at the time, except that uh, I had never seen planes of that type. Mr. Arnold, after landing, made a routine report of what he had seen to a Civil Aeronautics Administration representative. Promptly forgot the matter. Until the wheels of publicity began to turn, the floodgates opened. I never could understand at that time why the world got so upset about this. These things didn't seem to be a menace. I believe they had something to do with our Army and Air Force. On three different occasions, Mr. Arnold was questioned by military intelligence. They expressed doubt as to the accuracy of some of the reported observations. That's right. Now, of course, some of the reports they did take from newspapers, which did not quote me properly. Now, uh, when I told the press, they misquoted me, and in the excitement of it all, uh, one newspaper and another one got it so snarled up that uh, nobody knew just exactly what they were talking about, I guess. Here's how the name Flying Saucer was born.
experts take in 244 different observations. Just yesterday, we asked Major General William F. McKee, Assistant Vice Chief of Staff, United States Air Force, to summarize the conclusions reached by Project Saucer. He said, During two years of thorough investigation, no evidence was found which would indicate that the reported flying saucers were anything but the result of natural phenomena. On the other hand, all the evidence indicated that the reports of unidentified flying objects could be accounted for under three major headings. One, misinterpretation of various conventional objects. Two, a mild form of hysteria. Three, or simple hoaxes. It has been suggested that what people actually have been seeing is the result of some of our own secret experiments, guided missiles or new types of planes or flying weapons. This is emphatically not the case. None of the three military departments nor any other agency in government is conducting experiments, classified or otherwise, with disc-shaped flying objects which could be a basis for the reported phenomena. On December 27, 1949, Project Saucer went out of existence. The flying saucers, however, refused to follow the project into limbo. Just possibly one of the reasons behind the stubbornness of the saucers to accept the mantle of oblivion was an article that appeared in True magazine, just about the time Project Saucer was abandoned. It had previously been shown pretty conclusively that the number of sighting reports over a period of months usually followed closely the amount of publicity given to flying saucer observations. A lot of stories, a lot of sightings. Few stories, few sightings. Psychologists call this mass suggestion. But to return to the True magazine article printed in December of 1949, some percentage of the new wave of flying saucer reports can certainly be chalked off to mass suggestion. But again, as in the first reports, there remained that same unexplained percentage of reliable, trained observers who claim to have seen some object or objects wheeling, whirling, zooming, slicing, or hovering in the sky. Douglas Gourley of Laguna Beach, California, is an example. Here's his story. 